and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello there. Dexter, new blood, um, too many tuna sandwiches, I believe, I think it was called. Something about tuna sandwiches, something about there are many tuna sandwiches. Uh, uh, okay, first of all, I found that hilarious, the name of the episode. Um, yeah, episode six, too many tuna sandwiches. Okay, where to begin? Uh, it basically picks up after, well, the, her, I forgot her name, the, 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 not detective, uh, the, the cop, that, that, Dexter's, Dexter's girlfriend finds out who he is. He's pulled in for questioning and yeah, everything's just going. <laughs> She's trying to figure out answers, figure out answers why she couldn't trust him. And he's basically giving these heartfelt, actual emotions. Like I was feeling sorry for Dexter. I was like, oh my gosh. When you think about it that way, he literally tried to kill himself. It's like, oh my gosh, poor guy. And then she goes back to the fact that you're just like, well, you lied to me. And then just like everything he said that was emotionally impactful, she doesn't care. Yeah, Harrison didn't leave because of, okay, I need to really remember characters' names. Harrison didn't leave because the other serial killer allowed him to stick around, basically convinced him to stick around. And honestly, why? Why would he convince him to stick around? I have the feeling that he can sense himself in Harrison and he wants to be like a father figure to Harrison because it seems like Dexter has obviously lost it. He, he's not well at, like he even mentions it himself in this episode, he can't see serial killers for what they were. I mean, in the, if anyone's watched Dexter, they could tell, he like, every episode, he could, at the beginning of the season, he could tell. He could immediately tell who they were. He could smell it or feel it off of them, just a weird vibe. Like literally, the same vibe he gave off. He could tell it was them. Dokes could sense that vibe too, but hit heck. So it was one of those things that he's lost that. He's lost the ability to sense them. And I actually do like that. I like the fact that he's just like, he's referencing the fact that he's losing it. He's losing it. I, I don't know how I feel about the, the Mary girl being there. She doesn't really seem to serve a purpose whatsoever, except to push the story forward in a way or add a bit of more suspense to the story. Um, and of course, she puts herself in a precarious situation. And you're just like, why? Why would you knowingly go to this place in the middle of nowhere and follow this person down the steps it's just like there's a lot of stupid right there in that one moment and i'm like mm, no or at least turn on your tracker or something you just, just get, let it be known where you're going yeah so i i really do enjoy where this is going i mean the cliffhanger at the end too because it's just like you realize because i i knew it when you when going into it it's just like yeah they're gonna bring Dexter Morgan in to take care of this. She is going to call for Dexter Morgan because she doesn't want, she wants like a professional. So she's gonna call Dexter Morgan in. His, his ex at this point is gonna call Dexter Morgan in. Then ah. Harrison continues to show that he has a monster. The problem is he shows it to the wrong people or to the, everybody and doesn't address it to his father. But the problem is his father doesn't address the monster he has to his son. So it's kind of like they're both stuck in this limbo period where they're refusing to admit to one another that they themselves are a monster. That way, Dexter could take the joy in training Harrison. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to see where this goes. I am really excited to see where this goes. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Toodles!